okay, we're on the home stretch. We basically have our whole app working the way we want to within the CoreOS cluster. Uh, these guys are, you can, we can run as many web instances as we want. Dynamic load balancing is taking place. We have one problem left to solve, and that's that just like our app instances, we don't know the IP addresses and the port numbers of our Nginx load balancers because they're going to change all the time. If we need to run three of them, or if this one dies and gets scheduled over here, it's going to have a new IP address and a new port number. Uh, so we need to add two other things to complete the picture. We need something static. We need a fixed IP address that we can run DNS to. So let's say we're doing mysite.com. Um, I added a host entry for subdomains on mysite.com to point to this IP address right here, uh, which is this IP address. This is going to be a DNS. So in DigitalOcean, my DNS for mysite.com is going to point to this IP address. Um, and then this guy, port 80, which is HTTP, and port 443 for, S, uh, for SSL are going to automatically load balance between all of our Nginx instances. We're going to create subdomains. So say some app can be accessible by some app.mysite.com. And if we add, I don't know, say a forms app, then forms.my, then we, we, all our forms load balancers will be accessible by forms.mysite.com. Or maybe there will be a path. So mysite.com slash forms will automatically point to our forms load balancers. So that's what's going to happen up here. And we're going to basically do the same fix we did for our app service discovery is we're going to have our Nginx load balancers register themselves to an etcd registry that this guy can watch with confd and reload himself. So the exact same thing, uh, just a slightly different take on it. Um, what we're doing is we're going to create our own etcd registry, a new one, because it's a bad practice for anything outside of this CoreOS cluster to reference the internal etcd registry. That's a bad practice. So we don't want to use this one. We want to use one that's outside of our CoreOS cluster uh, that our Nginx load balancers can watch. So we're going to create, ideally you'd create a cluster of them. So there's failover, you know, three, five, or seven. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to do one. And then also ideally you don't want one copy of Nginx being your gateway to your whole app. Because if that goes down, your whole app goes down. Um, the ways around that is you'll share the same IP address uh, with keep alive. So you actually run two copies of this and uh, one guy gets the IP traffic. And if he goes down, that IP address points to the fail over one um, on AWS on Amazon. That's called, I believe a elastic IP because everything to Amazon is elastic. Uh, they call it a, Oh, what do they call it for digital ocean a flexible IP or something like that. Um, so they've got different names for all the services, Almost everybody except for Rackspace has that uh, virtual IP that you can share. Um, and you can look up how to do it on each of those services. For this example, to make it really easy, um, I'm going to create this registry. And I'm going to make it public so we can actually look at it with our web browser. You do not want this publicly accessible, though, because uh, you don't want anybody to be able to write files to your etcd registry and have your application load balancer try to reconfigure itself that's a really terrible idea uh, but i'm gonna actually make it public so we can watch it um, so what i did is i spun up a core os machine that's kind of act as our etcd and our nginx for this example we'll just make it really quick and dirty uh, let's go sshn core at uh, docker ps I ran etcd. I just kind of ran the, the Docker etcd image. And so that automatically is publicly exposed to port 2379. So I can go to this IP address, port 2379. That's my IP address. Uh, and then v2 keys. Uh, and you see I've got a subdomains kind of key folder set up right there. So any subdomains that show up in there, I want to create an nginx that load balances between them. We've kind of already solved that problem with confd for our Nginx load balancer uh, Docker image that we've created. So we're going to copy this. We're just going to make a couple little changes to it. One, in our, uh, in our Nginx TOML, we're going to watch a different key structure because we're talking to a different etcd registry. We're not talking to this registry now. We're going to talk to this registry. Uh, so we're going to, instead of looking at services some app upstream, we're just going to watch subdomains, and that's it. And for our example, our Nginx template looks a little different, whereas before, we always just proxied into app, which was an upstream of multiple servers, which is what you should be doing. 
um, we're just always going to, in this case, just proxy pass to one fixed server. Because again, for my example here, I'm assuming you never have one more than one load balancer for each app uh, for this example. So there we go. Do a Docker build. Do a Docker push. Uh, in this case, I did a Docker build and Docker, Docker push. I called it Will R Stern slash Nginx DNS. There we go. And so that's going to get one thing. All I need to do is I just need to give it my etcd. Um, let me show you Conf Watch. Only, only variable I need is where, how do I access etcd? As long as I know how to access etcd, everything else is kind of configured in the TOML here. I'm watching the subdomains key. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, run this container and we should be good. So docker run, we're gonna run it as a daemon in the background. We're gonna expose port 80 internal to a fixed port 80 external because it's getting HTTP traffic. Uh, and then we can also do port 443 if we're doing supporting SSL. Um, I'm giving it etcd, and etcd is running in this case on my same machine IP address, which is this guy here. So that would be a cluster somewhere else, but 2379, and name is DNS, and we're just going to run Will R. Stern, if I could spell my own name, engine X DNS. There you go. So that's running. It's configuring itself right now. Um, and now all we need to do is we just need to uh, now have our load balancer register itself. Because remember, uh, this guy's got to register itself to the etcd registry. So to do that is very simple. I just added an exec start post. We can really do two things. We can either um, add a sidekick service that does this for us, just like we did with our some app service. Or you can do it this way, which is the sidekick service would be a better way of doing it. But to show you the other way, I can just do an exec start post. So after my load balancer starts up, I'm going to do a put to that. There's my IP address again. I'm going to put to etcd. I'm going to register myself as some app. And I'm going to give it my public IP address and my public Docker port. And these are kind of those clunky commands to sniff out my IP address and to sniff out my Docker port. There might be cleaner ways of doing these. I'm not the most awesome person in the world at grepping stuff out, but these two commands are basically gonna send my port number and my IP address. Um, I'm not registering. You remember from Flannel, everybody has this internal IP address. That's not gonna work, because that's going to be internal to the CoreOS cluster. Um, what I've got to do is I've got to do an IP address that is internal to, um, that is my publicly accessible IP address. Um, so I'm going to do this IP address here, and then I'm also going to do the Docker port that that's exposed to. Now, if this is on the same subnet, then I might be able to do that flannel IP address and automatically do port 80. Uh, but in this instance, I'm just going to do the IP address of the CoreOS node I'm on and then the automatically created Docker port. Gosh, that's a mouthful. I'm registering myself. That's all it is, people. I'm registering myself, and here's the command. Look into it more if you want. <laughs> so I've actually already submitted this new service definition to Fleet, and I've restarted that. So if I actually go keys recursive true, you can see there's my submission. And what I used 15 sentences to tell you is I submitted the IP address and the port number. So I could go straight to this if I wanted to. And you can see it's load balancing between 1, 2, 3, and 4. Excellent. So that's the direct IP address and port number to this guy. And then he should have picked up on that by now and created a subdomain called, I think I called it some app. Yep, he should have created a subdomain called some app someapp.mysite.com there we go that is now automatically generated dns again i have a host entry on my computer i added so every subdomain for mysite.com comes to this ip address so there you go that's it we've wrapped it up we have completed the circle um and that's it so this is the only guy that actually has any kind of public ip address everything else is hidden we don't need to access etcd in the browser like i just did um, and there you go. Hopefully this series helped you out. Uh, love to hear any feedback on it. There are services that you can use in place of lots of these things. You don't have to use CoreOS. You can use um, Apache Mesos. 
You don't have to use etcd. You can use, uh, gosh, what's HashiCorp's got console. There's many other ways to do that. There's other ways to do the DNS portion, but this is a way to do it. So have a great day and enjoy Docker.